Welcome to the body imaging cases. This is a case of a lady 38 years old with acute recurrent right lower abdominal pain. An enhanced CT was performed followed 30 minutes later by contrast enhanced CT. On the unenhanced CT, we see a solid lesion which is not identified on the contrast enhanced CT. It has a tiny spot of calcification and a few peripherally located rounded structures less dense than the rest of the lesion. The rest of the lesion is quite dense for what we expect from a soft tissue lesion on unenhanced CT. With such an attenuation value as 52 Hounsfield unit, we need to think of iodine, iron, or calcium. Calcium is out because usually it is denser and more spotty and we have just seen a spot of calcification within the same lesion. So the background of the lesion is rather dense probably because of iodine or iron content. For iron, fresh blood is a possibility but here we are not dealing with that this is clearly a solid lesion so good examples of solid lesions which contain iron is splenosis and good example of solid lesion which contains iodine is struma ovarii just to mention one example of each. But let us first know the organ of origin of this lesion because from the start and until now we do not see the lesion on the same location at the un contrast enhanced CT. Still, it is not there. This is the uterus and this is the right horn of the uterus. So this lesion is probably the ovary or the at right adnexa. On the contrast enhanced image, we see a bunch of vessels at the location of the right horn of the uterus. Now we see the solid legion we were missing on the contrast enhanced CT. It is located in front of the uterus, strongly enhancing and displacing the urinary bladder which has been emptied by the patient in the interval between the two examinations. We do not know if this has been a triggering factor for the lesion to change its position, probably not. So by chance, this has been a sort of a dynamic imaging study of ovarian torsion. On one examination, the ovary was high in the lower part of the abdomen on the right. On the other examination, 30 minutes later, it has been down in the pelvis in front of the uterus and displacing the urinary bladder.
remember what we have said about the high attenuation value of the solid part of the lesion on the unenhanced CT. Now it is the full chance of the iodine to be responsible for the high density on the unenhanced CT, not the calcium and not the iron, because we have identified the lesion as ovarian in origin and stroma ovarii, that's to say the presence of thyroid tissue with iodine content within the ovary, is a recognized ovarian lesion. The strong enhancement of the lesion on the contrast enhanced CT is also unusual, particularly unusual for an ovary in torsion. Probably it is because of the very high blood flow to the thyroid tissue within the ovary and probably also due to uptake of the iodine by the functioning thyroid tissue within the ovary. Not only the passive enhancement of the intravascular component of the lesion and the interstitial component of the lesion, but also active uptake by the thyroid tissue. For one reason or another, the surgical intervention has been postponed and this MRI has been done four days later. The T2 weighted images show the torsed right ovary in front of the uterus starting to be devitalized along one side of it. This is the location of the torsed right ovary in front of the uterus, a typical location for ovarian torsion. Normally, the ovary, as we see here, the left ovary is located posterior to the broad ligament of the uterus. And this is the lesion on the T1 weighted images. Note that the right ovary shows higher signal intensity than the left ovary. Now the cause is different than on CT. It is the macromolecules of the thyroglobulin which are responsible for the higher signal intensity. This is the same image taken in the bright blood technique. So here you see the flowing blood bright without injection of contrast medium all over the pelvis. And look at the lesion. You see also high flow vessels within the lesion. This means that this torsion of the ovary, although in torsion we expect less flow of blood, is having high flow of blood. One more interesting finding in this case is the presence of a dilated and tortuous artery, in fact the right ovarian artery, on the gadolinium enhanced MR angiography. We are tracing the artery now to its destination. And it is supplying the torsed ovary. In fact, there is no reason to have such a tortuous and dilated ovarian artery in a usual or ordinary case of torsion. It sends us here two messages. The first is that within this ovary, there is a tissue with very high demand of blood supply, in this case, the thyroid tissue. Second message is that 
there has been a very long subclinical history of wandering here and there of this ovary and hence the extreme tortuosity and the elongation of the artery it is a process that has been there since birth therefore the diagnosis here is incomplete right ovarian torsion due to congenital immature teratoma containing thyroid tissue the so-called struma ovarii our learning points the abnormal location of an enlarged ovary should raise the possibility of ovarian torsion Struma ovarii remains a histological diagnosis. However, the diagnosis could be made in the present case based on five observations. The high attenuation value of the ovary on the unenhanced CT, and this is due to the inherent iodine content of the thyroid tissue within the ovary. Second, the intense enhancement with the iodine containing contrast agent this is not only due to the high vascularity but probably also due to iodine uptake third the high signal intensity on t1 weighted mri and this is due to macro molecules such as thyroglobulin fourth the high flow within the lesion on the bright blood imaging which is counterintuitive if we consider a case of just an ordinary uh, ovarian torsion case. Five, dilated and tortuous right ovarian artery supplying the lesion. Our next case is a lady, 28 years, postpartum with anemia and bilateral hip pain. 